Now, most of you have received invitations somewhere in your life to something. Uh, I actually received an invitation in the mail, oh gosh, about, I guess it was about three weeks ago now. The invitation that I received in the mail happened to be to a baby shower. Anyone here ever gone to a baby shower? Yeah. So my cousin's daughter is pregnant. That just shows you how old I'm getting, right? So my cousin's daughter is pregnant. Her name is Nicole, in case you want to know. She lives out in Massachusetts. So will I be attending the shower? No, probably not. But it was fun to get the invitation. I found out, though, after I received the invitation from my mother, that my cousin had actually called her and said, you know, we've got the baby shower coming up, but we're not really sure if we should send an invitation to your kids only because you live in Indiana and we know that you can't come. It's kind of like one, almost one and a half times removed. Uh, they have met Nicole, but they don't really know Nicole that much. And so we thought we'd call you and ask. So of course, my mother being my mother said, of course you should send them an invitation. They would love to give you their money. <laughs> now she didn't say that part, but you know, I added that second part. And so in the mail, we all received, meaning my two sisters and I, an invitation to the baby shower. And, and really, we, we would love to go. We would love to go if we could, but we can't, so we would love to send a gift. I mean, it's family, you know? You always want to do those things for family. But I did find it interesting that she was trying to figure out how far to send the invitation. You know, how far in the family do you go down for those type things? And that's always kind of a complicated thing. You know, family can sometimes be complicated. Anyone else out there have a complicated family besides me? Yeah, absolutely, yeah. We've all got complicated families for one reason or another. And so I've been thinking about invitation because I knew I'd also be preaching about invitation this week. And the scripture that we're going to read has an invitation in it, and you've already heard it. The invitation is from John the Baptist. And this invitation is to repent. And it may sound kind of strange to talk about repentance in Advent, but I think repentance should be talked about all the time. Because repentance should be a normal part of a Christian's life. It just should be. What is repentance? Well, repentance means more than just forgiveness. A lot of people think, well, you're asking God to forgive you for your sins. That is part of repentance, but it's not all. To repent means you not only seek God to forgive you for your sins, but you ask God to empower you to go and sin no more, to turn from that sin and go in a new direction. That part has to be added on for true repentance. And John the Baptist wanted to put out this invitation to repentance. Because John the Baptist understood the power of sin. And sometimes we don't think about the power of sin once we know Jesus, because we're like, well, Jesus has forgiven us for our sins, we don't have to worry about da 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 uh, True, true, I'm not going to argue that point. But sin can sometimes still have an effect on the life even of a believer in Jesus. And that effect is to almost numb the person. When you allow sin to come in your life, you become more numb to the activity of the Holy Spirit in your life. And the more sin you bring into your life, the more numb you become, where there can be a point where you've just decided you don't really care and you're just going to live your life the way you want to live it. And I've seen that happen, and it's very sad to me when that does occur, especially in a Christian's life. Repentance helps us to make sure that we are cleaning out our life so that we are always fully impacted by the power of the Holy Spirit. There's no numbing effect because we've cleared out that sin. Now, if you've got Jesus, you've already got salvation. So we're not talking salvation here. But we're talking about the ability to follow where God leads. You already know Christians still sin. It happens. But we also know the grace of God is greater than our sin. The grace of God covers all of our sin. But when we allow that sin to enter in our life, we become numb. 
And so we need time always with God to, be, to clear out our life, to be made aware of the sin that's there so that we can not only seek forgiveness, but we can also go in a new direction. We can also say, okay, I'm going to stop doing what I've been doing because I hear you, God. I need to change my way. Empower me to live in this new way. That's what repentance does. And that's what John the Baptist called the people to. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He was clearing the way for the Messiah to come. And that's what we're talking about in Advent, is the coming of the Messiah. Now, we're talking about the coming of the Messiah in the form of a baby. Right? Because that's what Christmas is, the birthday of Jesus. And we celebrate that birthday. But we already live on the other side of Christmas. We live on the other side of Easter. We already know the salvation that Jesus brings. We just got to be reminded sometimes that we're living in that. And that that invitation that John the Baptist gave, he didn't sit and think about, okay, exactly who do I need to give this invitation to? Should it just go to the Jews? Should it just go? He just gave a blanket invitation to everyone. And that invitation still goes out to everyone. But now, it's not John the Baptist that carries the invitation. It's you and I. And sometimes we need to be reminded, we carry that invitation. It's kind of like Christmas Eve. Modern worship service Christmas Eve starts at what time? Six Six o'clock. You're very good. Six o'clock. Have you decided who you're inviting to that service? I mean, seriously, you're going to invite somebody, right? Seriously? You should invite somebody to that service. I'm telling you right now, think about it, pray about it. Oh my gosh, thank goodness we're talking about it now. But who should you invite? You got to be careful when you invite family, right? Because, you know, you don't want to tick anybody off. You don't want to make anybody upset. Maybe there's a coworker you can invite, a neighbor you can invite. Maybe a child friend that you can invite. But there should be somebody you can invite. Because we're the ones that carry the invitation. And you see, that invitation isn't just a Christmas Eve service, although invite them to that. But the invitation is about a relationship with Jesus. That's what John the Baptist was about to begin as he was clearing the way for the coming of the Messiah. He needed to take them out of their numb state and say, hey, listen, God loves you. God wants a a relationship with you. And no matter how far away you have gotten from God, God is saying, come home. Come and be here. That's what the invitation was all about. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand which means the coming of the Messiah. So I want to read to you part of this invitation, but I also want to read to you how far this invitation goes because it doesn't go just in this lifetime. This invitation is for eternity because, you see, there is a heaven. I don't know if you realize that. There is an actual heaven, a real heaven. And those of us who have received Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we get to live with Jesus now, but we also get to live with Jesus for eternity in heaven. I mean, it's like the the cherry on the top of the most perfect Sunday ever. That, of course, has hot fudge on it because the perfect Sunday would. But, But it's that cherry. That's what heaven is. So I want to remind you of the invitation and just how far it goes. So we're going to start in the book of Matthew chapter 3, we are going to then leap over to the book of Isaiah and then leap back to Matthew. So uh, Steve, who's doing the thing slides up there, is going to follow along. You don't have to do a thing. Just relax and listen for the invitation. In those days, John the Baptist came to the Judean wilderness and began preaching his message. His message was, repent of your sins and turn to God, for the kingdom of heaven is near. Boom, did you hear it? The kingdom of heaven is near. This is the invitation. 
But what's the invitation too? What's, what's this heaven thing? Well, that's all I want to jump over to Isaiah. Isaiah 11, 1 through 10. You're going to hear about the Messiah, but then you're also going to hear about that heaven. So listen to this, starting at verse 1. Out of the stump of David's family will grow a shoot. Yes, a new branch bearing fruit from the old root. And the spirit of the Lord will rest on him, and the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. He will delight in obeying the Lord. He will not judge by appearance, nor make a decision based on hearsay. Isn't that good news? He will give justice to the poor and will make fair decisions for the exploited. The earth will shake at the force of his word, and one breath from his mouth will destroy the wicked. He will wear righteousness like a belt and truth like an undergarment. Who are we talking about here? Jesus. Anytime a preacher says something, just say Jesus. You're right 98% of the time, right? <laughs> we're talking about Jesus here. That's what we're talking about. This is Christmas. This is talking about who Jesus is going to be, although now we know who he is. But listen to the second part, because this is the heaven part, and all oh, this is good stuff. So listen to this, starting at verse 6. In that day, the wolf and the lamb will live together. The leopard will lie down with the baby goat. The calf and the yearling will be safe with the lion, and a little child will lead them. The cow will graze near the bear. The cub and the calf will lie down together. A lion will eat hay like a cow. I think that's kind of funny. Hear this one. The baby will play safely near the hole of a cobra. Yes, a little child will put his hand in a nest of deadly snakes without harm. Can you imagine? Nothing will hurt or destroy in all of my holy mountain. For as the waters fill the sea, so the earth will be filled with people who know the Lord. In that day, the heir to David's throne will be a banner of salvation to all the world. The nations will rally to him, and the land where he lives will be a glorious place. This is going to be heaven! Now, parts of this have come true, and that's the interesting part. When, when John the Baptist, in the book of Matthew, said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, or the kingdom of heaven is near, what he was talking about was the coming of the Messiah. Jesus ushered heaven into earth. But here's the reality. It's not fully here. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but it's not fully here. We on this earth, we get glimpses of heaven. Glimpses of moment when God's righteousness triumphs. Moments when we see the peace of God. Moments when his grace undergirds everything. We see that in this earth but we don't see it fully. I mean, how many of you right now would let your child go and play by the hole of the cobra? Anyone? Don't do it! We're not in heaven! Don't do it! Don't allow them to put their hand down a hole filled with them and the snakes. Don't do it! Not now! Because heaven has not fully been ushered in. That would be a deadly thing to do. Don't do it. I saw one raise their hand. I'm already thinking I might have to call Children Protection Services. <laughs> but that'll be a whole other thing. A parent, of a, a parent of a teenager. Well, God's grace abounds. <laughs> God's grace abounds, and that's why we have Michelle. Send them to Michelle. <laughs> Not to me, but to Michelle. <laughs> but there will be a day when your child can play with a cobra. That's craziness! But that's what heaven is going to be like. You know, when the leopard is going to, is it, was it the leopard? He's going to eat grass like a cow. Oh, the lion. He's going to eat, what lion do you know is going to eat grass? None of them right now. They're looking for a real good gazelle to eat. That's what they're looking for. But in heaven, 
peace will reign. And when peace reigns, everyone is content because they have what they need. And that's going to be heaven. I can't wait for that. But it's the cherry on the top. It's still coming. Right now, I get to live in this earth, and I like it too, because it has Sundays with hot fudge. But that's beside the point. I love living here with Jesus. I can't imagine living here without him. I can't imagine that. I don't know how people do it, even though I know there are many who do. I don't understand how. But John the Baptist sent out an invitation. Guess what? John's not here anymore, but you are and I am. And the invitation still needs to go out. Because people need to know that there is a way to live that can bring peace and contentment now while they're here on this planet. And that it will come to fruition in heaven when the peace won't be just in their heart, but it'll be in every heart of every lion and, and everything that it was listed in Isaiah. I rejoice in living with my Savior now, but I can't wait to live with my Savior in heaven for eternity. Although I, I gotta be honest, I, I don't want a cobra for a pet. I still want a bunny. <laughs> but the invitation is here. And even though it sounds crazy that we're talking about this invitation now, there are people in this world who are living with lives that are complete chaos. Complete chaos. We sing songs about, oh, holy night, and they're going, I just want a night when I get to sleep the whole way through. <laughs> right? They, they just want to try and get their, their own needs met and the needs of their kids. They don't care about cobras and lions. They got too much stuff in their own life. They need to know that there is somebody who cares about them and loves them. There is somebody who can offer them hope in the midst of their chaos. And we're the ones that carry the invitation. And John the Baptist brought that to us. Here, I want to finish what he says in Matthew. So I'm going to go back to Matthew chapter 3, and I'm going to start at verse 3. Got that, Steve? Verse 3. Steve, you are good. I don't care what your wife says. You are good. <laughs> All right, verse 3. Here's what it says. The prophet Isaiah was speaking about John when he said, he is a voice shouting in the wilderness. Prepare the way of the Lord's coming. Clear the road for him. This is John. John's clothes were woven from coarse camel hair, and he wore a leather belt around his waist. He was not a fashionista. He didn't care about any of that stuff. For food, he ate locusts. Can we all just say yuck? Yeah, that's yuck. But he also ate wild honey. That probably helped the legs go down a little easier. I know, it's gross stuff. People from Jerusalem and from all of Judea and all over the Jordan River went out to see and hear John. Everybody was coming to hear the invitation. And when they confessed their sins, when they repented, he baptized them in the Jordan River. But, you always got to love it when Scripture adds a but. But, when he saw many Pharisees and Sadducees coming to watch him baptize, he denounced them. You brood of snakes, he exclaimed. Who warned you to flee the coming wrath? Prove by the way you live that you have repented of your sins and turned to God. Don't just say to each other, oh, we're safe, for we are descendants of Abraham. That means nothing, for I tell you, God can create children of Abraham from these very stones. Even now, the axe of God's judgment is poised, ready to sever the roots of the trees. Yes, every tree that does not produce good fruit will be chopped down and thrown into the fire. I, meaning John, baptize you with water those who repent of their sins and turn to God. But somebody is coming who is greater than I am, so much greater that I'm not even worthy even 
to be his slave and carry his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. He is ready to separate the chaff from the wheat with his winnowing fork. Then he will clean up the threshing area, gathering the wheat into the barn, but burning the chaff with never-ending fire. That's a whole nother sermon. We're not going to get into that. But it's the invitation to repentance. It's the invitation to clear out for the coming of Christ. Now, my hope is if you're sitting in here today, you've already received Christ as your Lord and Savior. Hopefully, somewhere along the line, somebody told you, you need to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You need to do that. And hopefully, you have done that. But here's what I know. I know that Christians who have received Jesus as a Lord and Savior can begin to move away from Christ. It happens. Life, in all of its chaos, still bombards us. And it is easy to move away from Jesus. It is easy to allow the issues of this world to penetrate your life to such a way that you become, well, you just don't hear the voice of God as loud. And sometimes I'll even hear people say things like, God's far away. But here's the issue. God's not the one who moved. Because God doesn't move. But we do. Rather than following God, we easily begin to follow other voices and other things that fall into our life. The chaos of this world begins to dampen our ears to the voice of God. But here's the good news. The good news is that there is no sin greater than the grace of God. The good news is that the invitation still goes out. And the invitation says no matter how far away you have moved from God, God calls you home. Because God's grace is greater than your sin. God's grace can overcome any obstacle and any distance that you have moved from God. And he says, come home. God's always there with open arms. That's the invitation. Come home. Come home for the first time or come home for the 50th time. It doesn't matter. Christ is still there and he says, come home. That's the invitation. And that's the invitation that goes out to everyone. John started this invitation. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's almost here, folks. Now, we live in a time when we have Jesus, but sometimes we have forgotten the power of Jesus in our life. We have moved away and almost become immune to it. And that's when we hear the invitation that says, come back. Repent from your sin. Seek the forgiveness and begin to live in a new way and allow the Spirit of God to fill you and renew you. Come home. Maybe that's what this Advent season is for you. A return to home. A return to hope. A return to peace. And we know that heaven has not been fully actualized on this earth. How do I know it? I have yet to see a lion eating grass. I'm still not going to allow a child to play with a cobra. Not going to happen. It's not fully here yet. We get the glimpses. We see the moments. We, we experience the moments of, of God's presence and God's power. Those are holy moments. But in heaven, it won't just be a moment. It'll be eternity. Oh my gosh, that's powerful. But we need to let the invitation go forth because we want to bring everyone that we can to heaven with us. We can't worry about what they're going to say or what they're going to do. We can't worry about hurting somebody's feelings or getting somebody angry because we're talking about Jesus. It's too important. John says, I baptize you with water, 
What was water? Water is a cleansing. That's what John did. He cleansed in pre- preparation for what Jesus was going to do. Baptism of the Holy Spirit. What is that? That's salvation. That's salvation. Water is not salvation. That's why baptism has nothing to do with salvation. It clears the way. It's the act of God in us when we receive it that brings us salvation. How do we enact it? By simply saying, Jesus, come and be the leader of my life. Forgive me for my sins. I I lay my life before you. That's it. Nothing more to it than that. But that's why I wanted communion first today. Because for some of you, you can't even hear the message until that power of the Holy Spirit is in you, and that's what communion is. I'm going to invite the band to come up and get ready for our closing But as we get to that place, I want to remind you about that invitation. I want you to know that that invitation is for you and for your household. It's for your neighbors and your coworkers. It's for the people down the street and the people that are going to be working wherever you're going to go for lunch today. That invitation is for everyone. And if there's anyone in the room today who feels like you've just moved away from God, you've just began to follow your own way instead of following where God's leading, then the invitation today is for you to come home, to repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Jesus has come. And for us, we remember and we celebrate that every year at Christmas. There are a ton of candles on the cake of Jesus. But every one of those lights is a reminder for you and for me that Christ has come and he loves you. Amen.